Gregory. Today we are going to continue with the headway pre-intermediate. We will be working from chapter or unit number four, which is to do with shopping. We are going to be going to the reading and speaking section on page 24, page 34, sorry, which is all to do with different sort types of markets around the world. a market? Who would like to ever try to define what is a market? Somewhere you can buy fruit and vegetables from. Yes, a fruit and vegetable market. Are there other sorts of markets, Lou, that you know of? Stock market. Mm -hmm. Stock market. Paul? Yeah, like the Nasdaq, the FTSE, mm -hmm. Dow Jones, the Nikkei. These are all markets. They are all markets, exactly they are. But the sort of markets we are talking about here are markets where you can buy things. Where you can buy physical things, not stocks and shares, but actual items that you can take home with you. In South Africa, for instance, we have, and I'll show it in other parts of the world, this board is... We have three markets. What's a flea teacher? In this sense, a flea market, we won't worry about other meanings of flea, but a flea market is a place where you can buy many different types of things. There's one close to where I live in South Africa, and what you have there on Saturday mornings, you know, a lot of people, normally families that get together, and each family makes some different product and they put it up a table in a little stall and they sell these things and it can be things from key rings to animals made out of wire you can also buy cell phone covers, cell phone chargers, lamps almost anything is available at the flea market other markets oh, let me put it this way what is a shopping mall? Rianne Gallery. That is an example of a shopping mall, but how would you define a shopping mall? Somewhere inside, undercover, where you can buy things and also maybe eat food, buy clothes. Hmm. And shopping malls tend to be all very similar, don't they? If you go into a, any large shopping mall, you would expect to find clothing shops, places to buy food, places to buy groceries, a place to sit down and eat. They're all pretty much the same and they're very brightly lit. They are, as Paul said, they are indoors. They are normally several stories high, there's several layers. A market is less formal than that and each market can be very different to any other market. There's no formal. So we can say that shopping malls tend to be all very similar in appearance and in what they offer. Markets tend to be more varied and less formal. People just get together, a family will manufacture something that they think will sell, or they will buy something in bulk somewhere, and then just go there on a the morning and offer their wares for sale. Now, what we're going to look at are three very different markets. What we've looked at here, the difference between a shopping centre and a market. I didn't ask, do you ever go shopping in markets, Lou? I did. And what do you buy there? What do you find there? I buy food. Mm -hmm. Food that you can't get in a shopping mall or just because you prefer shopping at a market? I prefer shopping at a market because I can bargain with the vendor. Ah, yes, that is another difference between markets and malls. In a market, you can barter with the merchant who is selling stuff. In a mall, you cannot go to Hyper Panda and say, no, 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 I'm not paying five reals for those toilet rolls, I will, I'll offer you four. That would not work. Let us look at some of the differences that they talk about. 
A shopping center is a modern, covered building full of different shops. The shops are high street or international names and sell global brands. A market is often open air, and this is a, it is a covered market, and made up of small stalls. They usually sell local products. That is pretty much what we said. this introduction to markets for us, please. Markets around the world. Modern shopping centers, with their global brands and international designer names, look the same all over the world. So if you want to buy goods that are different, visit a market. There you can buy fine products made and grown locally. Thank you, Lou. What do we mean by international designer names? What do you think that means? Major store, the names um, that are used by major stores mm -hmm. that you can find in shopping centers all over the world. Yes. For example, the Gap, Abercrombie and Fitch, mm -hmm. um, Urban Outfitters, can be found in many countries. Excellent, thank you. Yes, international means all around the world, and designer names are well known brands that you can buy. Oh, you can buy fine products. Yes. What do you think they mean by fine products? Probably something to do with um, something that is for a woman. Maybe something like something that's elegant. Mm -hmm. Fine cloth, like certain kinds of lace or cotton. Yes. Possibly also makeup, maybe. How the stuff? I don't know. In this context, <laughs> fine means good. In, in other words, a product is a thing. So you can buy good stuff at the market. You can also buy stuff that is not so good, obviously. But often at these markets, you can buy things that are a lot less expensive than at a shopping mall and the same quality. So what we are going to do is read about three very different markets. The first one is the floating markets of Bangkok. How do you, in what sense do you think the market is floating? Maybe the items being sold are on a series of boats, a river or a lake. Yeah. What do you think, Paul? I agree with Lou. Well, why don't we read this and we can see how it all works. I will read the first one and you will take turns reading the second and the third. Where is Bangkok, by the way? Which country? Is Asia. Yes, Thailand. as part of Thailand, yes. Bangkok, the capital of Thailand, is a city of contrasts. The tall glass buildings look like any other modern city. But behind them is a place where life hasn't changed for over a hundred years. The canals. Built in 1866 by the king of Thailand, these canals are home to many Thai people who still live and work there today. There are four floating markets around Bangkok. And the oldest and most popular is in the town of Domonen, Sadwak. This market opens every day from 6.30 a.m. It's best to shop early and go by water taxi. After 9 a.m., the tourist buses arrive and it's much too busy. It's a colorful, noisy, fascinating place. Old ladies with huge hats sit in small boats full of tropical fruit and vegetables, fresh coconut juice and local food. Did you miss your breakfast? Then just call a seller for a bowl of hot soup. He'll get it from a cooker at the back of his boats. But the boats don't just sell food. 
Would you like a traditional hat? A silk dress? A flowered shirt? Then just call and point. After the noise and excitement of the market, continue along the canal. Soon you'll see the wooden houses, orchards and floating flowers of the canal villages. It's a lovely, peaceful way to finish your trip. Let's have a look at some of these words that you may not be familiar with. What does contrast, city of contrast mean, teacher? I was about to ask you that, Paul. Different uh, things that happen, like uh, maybe rich people, old people, big buildings, small buildings, new buildings, stuff like that? Exactly correct. It is a city of contrast, it means it is a city of opposites, big and small, rich and poor, beautiful and ugly. So the, the contrasts are the opposites that you'll find in the city. What else? Canals? Yes, what are canals, teacher? Canals are, you can think of them as small rivers. Water flows along them, and they can be fairly narrow, like the space between these desks, or really wide, be up by a couple of hundred meters perhaps. And they are normally deep enough for boats to float on, or to swim in, or to do other stuff. So they said there are four floating markets around Bangkok. And they say it is best to go there by water taxi. What would a water taxi be used to do? Maybe a boat where you can pay the boat owner to take you across the river or down the river? Hmm. Absolutely. You get onto the boat and you pay the owner of the boat to take you somewhere on the river. In Bangkok, you also get river taxis, uh, river buses, which is a bigger boat which can hold maybe 50 or 60 people. You pay a fixed amount of money and you can travel up the river and it makes different stops along the way. And you can hop off anywhere and an hour later you can come back and jump onto the next one and travel all the way up and down the river. That Teacher, way. what does hop off mean? It means, it's a colloquial term in English, a slang term, meaning climb on or climb off. Okay. So you get on a bus to go somewhere. You can also say, if you're talking informally, you hopped on the bus. What does fascinating mean, as in fascinating place? I was about to ask you that exact question. Lou, can you help Paul with the very, meaning of fascinating? Maybe very interesting? Hmm. It means that when you look at it, you think, wow, that is something. Fascinating. It means it holds your attention. You look at it, you think that is really something. So, can I say we have a fascinating teacher? I would be very happy to hear you say that, yes. So, how does this market work then? If you want to buy something, how, how do you do it? Where are the goods? How, how does this all happen? From what we have read, what would you say? Here's a clue. They say, if you've missed your breakfast, what, what, what should you do? You can call a seller for a bowl of hot soup. Hmm. And where does he get the soup from? He's got a cooker on his boat. It's in the back of his boat. Yes. He's cooking soup. Yes. So you have what is effectively a small restaurant, which is on a boat, a takeaway restaurant. Teacher, what is tropical? What's that? Tro tropical fruit. Okay, there's a part of the earth near the equator which is called the tropics. And in that part of the earth you get certain fruits that grow only in that hot and humid sort of climate. They're called tropical fruits. Like Pineapples. What part of the world is the tropics then? You can think of it as being next to the equator. The equator is the center point of the earth, going east-west around the earth, and in a band on either side of the equator are the tropics. Does it answer your question? It does. Um, 
figure to <coughs> here. So what if you want to buy a traditional hat? Lou, how would you go about that if you had buy at the floating market, at this floating market? I would call and I would point to the hat. Hmm. Why point to the hat? Because if I point to the hat, they know that I'm interested in that hat. Why don't you just tell them? Because it says, then just call and point. So I'm following what the passage says. Yeah, but they might not speak English. That is the, <laughs> uh, that is the whole thing, I believe. They will not understand if you say, I want to look at that hat there, please. But if you point, there, yeah, that one. They say, aha, yes. And again, this is another boat. So you see the boat going past, or you go past the boat. Say, oh, I like that. And you call the man over, you call the boat over, and you point. And you give him the money, and he gives you the goods. And when you have finished your shopping, let's say you continue along the canal, and you'll see wooden houses, Orchards. What's an orchard? Lots of apple trees. Yes. Or any fruit tree, any group of trees that on which grows fruit. Yes. And flowers of the canal villages. But doesn't it say floating flowers? Yes. They have flowers floating on the river and growing on the river. What for? Is that like for dead people? No, that is to make it look very pretty. Oh. And very attractive. As you go along in the boat, you can say, ah, oh, isn't that nice? Do you have any other silly questions, Paul? I don't have any silly questions. I do have one question, though. What does peaceful mean? Peaceful means quiet, without any disturbance. Everything is just going along very nicely, thank you. I heard an expression. Hunky dory. Mm -hmm. And they said it means when everything's going along peaceful. Everything's going along well. Everything is going along well, not necessarily peacefully. If everything is hunky dory, it means everything is exactly as it should be. If things are peaceful, it means that they are quiet and there's just not much happening. It's just all very relaxing and you can just sit back and say, ah, this is nice. Like you're sitting now, for instance. Paul, will you read the second paragraph for us, please? Yeah. A perfect day in Provence. Every Sunday in a small town called Isle sur le Sorou in southern France, there is a truly amazing market. Isle sur le Sorou, I don't know how you pronounce it, yeah. is like Venice. The river Sorou runs in and out of the old narrow streets and under the many bridges. And on market day, every street and bridge is packed with stalls. From early morning, this sleepy little town becomes a noisy, busy place with sellers calling to you in the accent of the South. You can choose from an amazing selection of olives, hundreds of cheeses, and delicious roast chickens. But it is not just a food market. Antique sellers fill the pavements with beautiful old French furniture, and there are tables covered with antique lace and cloth. Flower sellers invite you to pick from their brightly coloured bunches of flowers. The air is filled with the smell of soaps, herbs and lavender, all made and grown in Provence. Do you need a sun hat? Did you forget your beach towel? Your choices are endless. Travellers fill their backpacks with delicious things for Sunday lunch. Olive bread, tomatoes, chicken, melon, and of course, a bottle of local mineral water. At one o'clock, everything closes and everyone goes home. Then it's time to find a cool place next to the river for a perfect picnic on a perfect day in Provence. Thank you, Paul. Very nasty done. What are some of the words here that perhaps we are not too familiar with? You can choose from an amazing selection of olives. Lou, what do you think that means? A very wide selection. A very wide selection. An amazing means like also, wow, so many. It is Teacher, not a, yes, but what does narrow mean? Narrow is the opposite of wide. Wide means wide, narrow means not wide. What are the sorts of things you can buy at this 
markets nu uh, olives mm -hmm. cheese yes roast chicken yeah what else for is it, it just says is it only food you can buy there or can you soaps herbs lavender but teacher it says packed with stalls what does that mean Packs of stalls means that there are many stalls right next to each other. There's no space between them. They are right up against each other. There are so many of them that there's just one after the other. Oh. What does sleepy little town mean? Uh, can a town actually be sleepy? Sleepy is, for us, means you're ready to go to bed. I'm tired. Like tired. So what's a tired little town? Well now this is where they use English in a different way. Oh. When they call it a sleepy town, they mean it is a very, what the word we used earlier, peaceful. Peaceful, quiet, not exciting, very relaxing. In other words, sleepy, not an awful lot happens there. Nothing exciting happens there. What else can you buy there, Paul? You can buy food as Lou told us, cheese and chicken and olives. Teacher, yes, it says the accent of the South. What does that mean, accent of the South? When you speak, you speak with the accent of the English. It is the way of pronouncing your words. Actually, in yeah. England, we have many, many, many different accents. We are not going to be going, that, that'll be for another lesson at some stage. In general, you speak like an Englishman. Well, what does an Englishman speak like? Like you. Oh, no, they don't. <laughs> not all of them. <laughs> okay. So my, no, but the point is, my accent is from the south. South of England. South yeah. East of England. But the accent means the way that people pronounce their words in that part of the world from which you come. The same with America. Lou comes from America. He speaks with what is generally called an American accent. Although, of course, there are many areas in America where they have different accents. But I suppose it's the same in South Africa. Exactly so. So yeah. what kind of accent do you speak with? We put them all together and say South African. The same as we talk about American accent. Unless we need to be very specific about which part of the country we are talking about. It is of really no importance. As a South African, I speak with a South African accent. Whether it's a Natal accent or Johannesburg accent is irrelevant. Irrelevant in this case. If you were Sherlock Holmes and you were trying to solve a mystery and you only had a voice to go on, then perhaps you'd want to narrow it right down. Teacher. Yes. What does it mean, roast chicken? That is when you take a chicken a dead chicken and you put it in an oven and you heat it up until it is cooked and brown on the outside. What's bunches? There's a word there, bunches. Bunches of flowers. A bunch of something is a collection of things that are all together that you can generally hold together. So a bunch of flowers will be 10 or 15 flowers that you can hold in your hand. So can we say a bunch of bananas? You absolutely can, because bananas do come in a group of six or seven, which you call a bunch of bananas. What's a towel? That is what you use to dry yourself after you have been swimming or after you've had a shower. It's that large cloth and you, you dry yourself, you dry your body. Teacher, yes, what does antique mean? Ah, I was about to ask you that question. Lou, can you help Paul out of the meaning of antique? Something very old, but still valuable. Yes. That, that is the important thing. It's not just old, it's also valuable. Can we say an antique man? Not really. That would not be an appropriate use of the word antique. If it's an old man, you would say he's an old man. So how old is something that is antique? I think it is generally set at around about 70 years old for most items. 
After 70 years, it's considered an antique if it still has value. But it's, other people say it's 100 years old. It's, it's of no importance in this case. So I thought antique was 100 years old. But generally, it just means something very old that still has a lot of value. And some people make a living collecting antiques. Teacher, what's a backpack? A backpack is what you, it's a bag, you pack things in it, and you put it on your back to carry. In fact, Paul, there is your backpack. This, this is Paul's backpack. And over there is Lou's backpack. the next one, the Souks of Marrakesh. Lou, would you read that for us, please? Marrakesh in Morocco is a city of ancient sand-colored buildings and palm trees in the middle of the desert. In the center is the main square, Jama al -Fiyah. Here you can see snakes and drink Moroccan coffee. But behind the square is the real heart of the city. This is the souk, the Arabic word for market. Hundreds of little shops and stalls are open from early morning to lunchtime and again in the evening. The souk, with its narrow, busy streets, is divided into lots of smaller souks. There's the aromatic bright spice souk, the noisy meat souk, the colorful clothing souk, the gold and silver souk, and many more. Finally, there's the carpet souk. Here, hundreds of handmade Moroccan rugs and carpets cover the pavements. No two rugs are the same. Commissioner Yosef's rug shop, he invites you to sit down among all the beautiful carpets. A silver teapot arrives with little glasses, and Mr. Yosef talks about the different rugs while his assistants roll them out one by one. Two hours later, after many glasses of traditional mint tea and lots of bargaining, you finally choose your rug and leave much horror. Then it's time to return to the bay in the square to watch the snakes and count your money. Thank you. What are some of the words here that are perhaps not too familiar? Ancients. What is the meaning of ancient? Very, very old, yes. But do we use it for people or buildings or what? It normally refers to buildings, but it can also refer to books and items as well. With people, we sometimes use it in a fun way. Say that man is really ancient, which means he's a very old man. But that would be informal talk, not, not informal speech. What does it mean, the heart of the city? The heart of the city would generally mean the center, busiest part of the city, the most important part of the city. That is the heart of the city. In the same way that your heart is one of the most important parts of your body, without a heart you die. A city has a heart, which is where things happen. So what does uh, lunchtime mean? Lunchtime is what you look forward to from the time you get to work in the mornings, Paul. Oh. It is when you stop work and you have your midday meal. Okay. But see, also, again, they talk about narrow, busy streets. Do you remember the meaning of narrow? Yes, not wide, you said. Absolutely. And how many different types of souks are there? There's one main souk, which is the main area, which is broken down into many smaller souks. For instance, Lou? The, let's see, the shops and stalls, um, the souk that sells Spice. Yes. The soup that sells meat. Mm -hmm. The soup that sells clothing. 
A suit that sells gold and silver? And yes. Others? Yeah, and many more. Paul, what does Mr. Yusuf sell? And how does he do it? Mr. Yusuf. Which well, is the second paragraph. Yes. He uh, talks about different rugs. Mm -hmm. And what he does is he gets his assistant to roll them out one by one. And then after talking to the people who are potential clients or customers, he gives them lots of mint tea mm -hmm. and then he starts bargaining with them mm -hmm. and you choose your rug and you leave with not so much money in your pocket. Yes. What is a silver teapot? A teapot's made of silver. And what is a teapot? What does one use a teapot for? A teapot, first you put your tea into the pot mm -hmm. and then you get a boiling amount of water, hot water, and you pour the hot water onto the tea mm -hmm. inside the pot. In fact, in short, a teapot is to hold tea, and from which we pour tea into cups. But it's also to hold water. You could make it used to hold anything at all, in fact. Like tea and water, hot water. Yes. So it holds the brewed tea in the pot. Teacher, what does brew mean? It is when you mix the tea leaves with the hot water. It forms a brew of tea. How long do you have to wait for it to brew? It depends on which person you are speaking to. Generally, you are looking at about five minutes. Why does Mr. Yusuf give you or give his potential customers many cups of tea? What is the idea? Why does he do that? Maybe traditional Moroccan hospitality. Mm-hmm and that may be influencing you and the bargaining mm -hmm. so that you feel like you're in debt to him for his hospitality and you have to pay him more for the carpet you buy. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it is to make you feel indebted to him. He's been kind to you, so you want to be, you feel the urge to be kind back. Indebted teacher, what is that? Indebted. Means, indebted to somebody means that you owe them something. So if he's been giving you many cups of tea, you feel, well, I need to give something back. And what does he want from you? He wants you to buy one of his rugs. No, he wants your money. Exactly. And he gets your money by giving you a rug in exchange for some of your money. So he gives you a lot of tea to make you feel relaxed, first of all. You sit down and you talk about things. You feel comfortable and relaxed. You don't feel that you're being pressured to buy anything. But in fact, you are being very pressure without it being very obvious that you are being pressured. Which one of these markets would you like to go to, Luke? If you had to choose one. The gold and silver market. Mm -hmm. But out of the Marrakesh, Provence and the floating markets of Bangkok. I would like to go to the Marrakesh. Mm -hmm. What particularly do you like about it? If I buy gold and silver there, I know it will retain its value or increase its value over time. Yes. What about you, Paul? Which one of those three markets do you think you would like to visit? The floating market in Bangkok. Yes, fascinating, I would say. And very different. Well, actually, I have seen it. Oh, and tell us about it. Well... You kind of stand on the edges of the canal mm -hmm. and they come up to you, they, they come along in these boats. There's quite a lot of them that actually sell flowers as well as fruit and vegetables. And you just shout out your order to them and they come up to you on the side of the mm -hmm. bank of the uh, canal. Of the canal, sorry. And um, they, they're very cheap. It's not expensive. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, I thought, I, as I remember, I bought some fruits off of one of them. It was in Bangkok. Yeah. Mm. I remember also when I was in Bangkok on the river. I wasn't at the market, but there were just three or four boats that we passed along the way selling cool drinks and beer and some had some clothing and hats and towels, yeah. and miscellaneous items. Yeah, yeah. And they would come right up to your boat and you could have a look at what they've got. And if you wanted to buy something, you'd reached out, gave him the money and took your item. Well, that concludes today's lesson. 
Thank you for your time and attention. And we will continue at some time in the future. Are there any questions? Uh, no, thank you, teacher. Lou, any questions? No, thank you. Good, thank you.